Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about these things here, lithium polymer batteries or LiPo batteries as they are commonly known. Now, if you are new to radio control and uh, you're trying to figure out how all this stuff works, then this is part of a series of videos that you can click by clicking on this little tag here, or I'll put a link in the description. And all those videos are aimed at all you new pilots or drivers or whatever who are getting into the hobby. But this one is specifically an update around LiPo batteries, because to be honest, I've had one of these videos for a very long time and it's proved very popular. But I thought it was time to revisit the topic and make an updated one and talk about all the differences. Particularly, as I've made a couple of other videos that are related to batteries that go into slightly more depth and actually together, all of these videos kind of will give you a really good understanding about what you need to think about when you're thinking about LiPo batteries. Now, again, links to those other videos in the description, but let's get started. So the first thing we need to talk about is the safety with lithium polymer batteries or LiPo batteries or LiPo packs. Now, you've probably seen lots of videos on places like YouTube where these things burst into flames and they are typically bursting into flames because they have been abused. They store an, a lot of electrical energy in a relatively small lightweight package, which makes them perfect for the radio controlled hobby. And seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, they started to become more widespread, as I'm recording this video. And uh, recently, over the last three or four years, as the multi-rotor explosion happened, they've got an awful lot cheaper. Now they come in lots of shapes and different sizes. All the ones here happen to be from Hobby King, but you can get them from lots of different places. And they have different voltages, different C ratings, and I'll go through what all the numbers on the packs mean in a minute. Now, whenever you charge a battery, uh, you need to be careful, put them in a LiPo safe bag. Uh, but batteries, unless you are abusing them or you're extremely unlucky, are relatively safe. Because in those videos where they tend to burst into flames, you'll notice that they're either being short circuited or someone's trying to drive a nail through the middle of them. And surprise, surprise, they don't like that. But then most batteries don't like being short circuited like that either. When you're charging a LiPo battery, uh, put it in that LiPo safe bag. Don't leave it unattended. Uh, the charging cycle can take, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, depends on the size of the battery and what you're charging it at. But the temptation is to go away and leave it. Um, while I would be quite happy to leave a charging battery to, to have a nip to the loo, I wouldn't leave LiPo charging for a long period of time and when I'm not using them I try and keep them in lipo safe bags or in airtight tins and when you have finished with a lipo battery pop it down to something called storage charge and put it away nice and safe if you are concerned about a battery that it isn't performing well or it started to puff up then don't use it retire it it isn't worth risking the model or your house or property with a lipo battery failing in a spectacular way so with all the safety stuff out of the way, let's get into some of the detail. So inside every battery, uh, there's a number of cells. Now, simple batteries are a single cell. Uh, this is a 3S battery and it has th three cells inside, 3S, 3 in serial. So there are three cells, something like this, which is a 4S battery. This has four cells in it connected in series or a 4S pack. Now, the more cells you add, the higher the voltage. Now, you can have small 3S batteries, things like this. This is a little 850 milliamp hour pack. I fly small wings on stuff like this. This is a 3S battery, and this is a 3S battery. Uh, now, that seems really weird, but it's only the number of cells inside that we're talking about. And the more cells you add, the more voltage you add. And we'll get into more detail on that now. Each cell in the battery has a working voltage in lithium polymer batteries or LiPo batteries. Each cell has a working voltage from three and a half volts where it's considered empty. So it's not like, you know, these kind of double A batteries where when it's completely empty, you know, it kind of doesn't even light the bulb anymore that you throw it away. Um, these LiPo packs have a working voltage of three and a half volts when the cell is empty to 4.2 volts when the cell is fully charged. So that is your working range. Now that isn't too different. So that does mean that you don't get big voltage changes when you're flying and the thrust is kind of the same as you're flying something like a multi-rotor. But it does mean that if you 
uh, exercise a pack down to below the 10 and a half volts, then you potentially are going to cause irreversible chemical changes in the pack, which will stop it performing properly. So always make sure that when you are finishing with a pack that you don't discharge the cells in the pack. And again, the cells, there's either three or four in the examples here, but you can have six uh, cell batteries and others that you don't discharge the individual cells below about three and a half volts. Last thing to be aware of is that there are high voltage packs. You tend to find these on the tiny whoop star models. Those can be charged up to 4.35 volts, uh, and the, but they operate in exactly the same way. It will have high voltage written on it if it's a HV pack. If you're not sure, then always charge the battery so that each cell goes to 4.2 volts. And a LiPo battery charger will do that by default. Now there's quite a few numbers on a battery like this. Uh, this one is a 2200 3S pack. The 2200 is corresponding to how much electrical energy is actually stored inside this battery. 2200 is a pretty common size for an awful lots of models. And a 2200 pack is what I used to fly my 450 helicopters on. You can kind of just see the tail of a 500 class heli behind me. And I fly lots of my fixed wing models on 2200s as well. But the 2200 is talking about the capacity or how much energy is inside here. So you can think of it like the bigger that number, the more energy is stored inside the battery and the more energy you can pull out. Be careful because it can be confusing when you look at that and it says 2200 milliamp hours and you are using a camera maybe that needs 200 milliamps that you think, oh wow, we've got a big problem because this battery is so much bigger. It's 2200 milliamp hours versus the 200 milliamps I need for the camera. Those kind of things, don't worry about that. I'll talk about that in a minute. This is just the capacity. So it's like how big the tank is in your car or truck. The bigger the tank in the vehicle, uh, the more capacity it has. And that number is just a measure of how much capacity the battery has. A safe rule of thumb is you always pull about 80% of the milliamp hour rating out of a pack. Um, so if you have something like an on-screen display or something else that you can monitor that or a way with a, an amp sensor, you kind of keep track of it. So if you had a pack that was a thousand milliamp hours rated, then you wouldn't pull more than 800 milliamp hours out of the pack uh, to make sure that you were treating it with a bit of respect. I would always err on the side of caution and just pull a little bit less. Batteries last longer if you treat them with a bit of respect. The C rating is also on the pack as well. Now this is a 25C rated pack. Now the C rating along with the milliamp hour capacity of the pack, if you multiply those two together, it will give you the maximum current that you can pull out of the lead of the battery. So if this is a 20C rated pack and it was a 20 200 milliamp hour capacity, then that would mean that I could pull a maximum of 44 amps out of the pack. Just be careful, sometimes the capacity is rated like this in milliamp hours. So this is a 2200 milliamp hours, or sometimes it's rated like the one on this pack, uh, which is 1.3, and that's the same as a 1300. Uh, so just be careful of that. Sometimes the rating is in milliamp hours, or sometimes it's in amp hours, like in the 1.3 example. But both of the ways, the math works exactly the same. So in this example here, this battery is a 1.3 amp hour capacity, which is 1.3, and it's a 45 uh, C rating. So if you multiply those two together, uh, you get 58,500 milliamps or 58 and a half amps is what you can pull out this battery safely. Although ideally, if you pull a little bit less, again, you'll be treating it with respect and it'll last you a bit longer. Let's talk about charging next. Now to charge a pack, uh, as we talked about at the beginning, each of the cells inside this battery have a working voltage of three and a half volts when they are empty and 4.2 volts, unless it's a high voltage pack, when each of the cells is fully charged. Now a LiPo charger will do all that for you. You typically have to plug in the power connection and the balance tap into the charger and select the program that you want and off you go. Now the thing is you never charge the battery more than the C rating unless it explicitly says so somewhere on the pack. So with this 
uh, 1.3 amp hour capacity pack, I would charge it at 1.3 amps. With this pack here, this is um, a Zippy 2200, I would charge it at 2200 milliamps or 2.2 amps. With something like this, even though it's a much bigger battery than that one, uh, this is a 4S um, high capacity a discharge pack uh, I still would only charge it at 2.2 amps on the charger now most packs when they are new um, I would kind of do a balanced charge every two or three flights and do a normal charge in between now what a balanced charge does is it actually makes sure that each of the individual cells that make up this battery are charged to the 4.2 volts maximum perfectly. Now what can happen if you don't do a balanced charge is the thing is the battery is charged until uh, almost all the cells are at the maximum capacity and then it stops but there might be one or two cells in here maybe the first cell is 4.2 volts and the fourth cell is 4.2 volts and maybe the middle two is, is 4.17 and 4.18 um, a balance charge will then charge those cells specifically to bring them up to the absolute maximum if you have a charger that has lots of different functionality and I would advise to invest in a decent charger if you're going to get into the hobby then I would recommend keep an eye on the packs uh, if you have the time balance charge them they'll thank you for it and charge them at less than the capacity so whereas I would charge this at 2.2 if I was uh, trying to get charged as quickly as I could I would probably charge it at 2 amps or maybe 1.5 amp it'll take a bit longer but again it Will treat the battery well and it'll last a little bit longer and perform better for you over a longer period of time so when you're picking a pack for your individual model you need to make sure that the pack is capable of delivering more amps than you need so let's say for example that the model that i'm going to use has a 40 amp speed controller in it then i would want a battery that could comfortably supply a little bit more than the 40 amps now this is a 2200 milliamp power pack with a 25 C rating. So if I multiply those two together, then this pack will provide 55 amps, and that is much more than the 40 amp speed control that I have in the model. So this would be a good fit. If the battery is less max amperage than the ESC that you're using, say the ESC is rated for 30 amps and the battery that you've got is only rated for 25 amps, that probably isn't a great battery. I would get one with a higher C rating or with more capacity. Be aware though that the more capacity usually means a heavier battery. If the pack is slightly warm when you take it off the model, that's pretty typical. Uh, it should be just slightly warm. If it's warmer than that, if it's getting quite hot, um, then there is a problem you need to check it. It probably means that there's more current being pulled from the pack than it's happy supplying or the battery is getting quite old and uh, it probably needs to be retired. But check both of those things if after a flight the battery is getting warm. I would recommend using a flight timer on your radio. I always try and leave about 3.6, 3.7 volts in a pack at the end of a flight. Uh, that just makes sure that I haven't overstressed the battery when I've been flying it. And the other thing you can do as well is if you have some kind of current monitor on your model is to track the amount of current that's been used. Again, we talked about the 80% rule a moment ago and you can track that and maybe set an alert or alarm to go off so that as you pass 70% of the capacity used, you know that it's time to come home and land. A couple of comments about storing these things. Again, store them safely as I talked at the beginning. Uh, put them in life of safe bags or airtight tins. Keep them away from flammable materials. Um, put them into something called a storage charge if you're not going to be using them. Occasionally you'll have a situation where you might charge them a few packs if you go into the field to fly. Maybe due to tide weather traffic, unintended landing, <clears throat> also known as a crash you can't use all the packs and you bring them home don't put them away fully charged most chargers will have a discharge function or storage charge function put them into storage charge before you put them away that will usually take down each of the cells inside the pack to about 3.8 volts and they will be able to sit at that for months at a time putting a pack away with a full charge in it will 
potentially cause nasty things to happen and when you bring the battery back out it'll be all puffed up and you'll have to uh, discharge it and throw it away. I like to add little markers onto my batteries. You may have spotted this. Uh, these are available from places like Hobby King. I'll put a link in the description and I kind of use it to show when a battery is charged or not. It can be handy if you have lots of the same kind of battery at the field to keep track of which ones have um, have a charge and which ones have already been flown or driven. The other thing that's handy to have is some kind of LiPo checker that you can plug into the balance tap that shows you how much of the capacity or voltage is left in. That is also very handy just to make sure that you're not doing something like putting a partially discharged battery back on something like a quadcopter and then having it tumble out the sky uh, 60 seconds after you start your flight. Now, there are a couple of extra things if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the batteries. Uh, all these batteries have an internal resistance. I'm not going to talk too much about it, apart from to say that a brand new battery will have a really low internal resistance and an older battery will have a much higher internal resistance. Modern chargers, smart chargers will have a way to measure that internal resistance and it's a great way to check whether your batteries are getting past it. Ideally, low single figures uh, for each of the cells uh, milliohms is a great reading once it gets over about 18 and definitely over 20 for me that's the time where the pack has kind of had it and needs to be retired again a common misconception is the milliamp hour rating of the pack is how much current it's going to push through the circuit batteries don't work that way what is actually happening is the battery as you connect it into the circuit if the circuit needs 30 amps it'll pull 30 amps from the from the battery if then you reduce the throttle and you only need four amps it'll only pull four amps for the battery so the battery isn't going to always push the uh, the maximum current through the circuit it doesn't work that way but what you need to do is make sure that the battery has a high enough amperage rating and enough capacity and voltage for everything to work properly again see the other videos in the radio control for beginners and introduction to remote control series i'll put links below for more detail on how you select a battery for your model and finally let's talk about what happens when they have reached the end of their useful life they don't last forever you you'll get several hundred cycles through it a cycle is a discharge and recharge and once you get to that point then it's time to give up if the pack again starts to look puffed up you can see here it's got nice crisp clean edges then this is absolutely fine. This is what a good battery should look like. There's no puffing at all. Um, if, however, it starts to look like it's being puffed up like a balloon, then it's time to get rid of it. If you notice that when you put it on the charger, the individual cell voltages are starting to, to get further and further away, so it needs more time on balance charging, then that's probably an indicator that the battery is towards the end of its life as well. One of the cells inside is probably getting a little bit tired. Also, keep an eye on that internal resistance if you have a charger that will let you measure it. Once it gets to above about 18 uh, milliohms, then I would, again, it, it start to give up. Again, links in the description to a video that explains a lot more about internal resistance. And to dispose of a pack, the way I do it, there was lots of things back in the day about, oh, you dunk it in seawater and all kinds of stuff. What you need to do is just get rid of all the voltage in the pack. And what I do is I uh, have a little load that goes on here. It's actually a little bulb from a car. Plug it in. Initially, it's nice and bright. And then usually stick it on the barbecue overnight outside. And it gently discharges. The following day, there's no voltage on it at all. And I just clip the leads off and then uh, take it to the local recycling center. Check with your local authority on how to dispose of your used LiPo batteries safely and responsibly and make sure you follow those guidelines. So hopefully that those of you who are new to the hobby, that helps you understand a little bit more about LiPo batteries. Again, links in the description below if you want to learn more about the basics of the radio controlled hobby, things like radios, how it all works. Uh, but hopefully this has given you more of an understanding of the basics of LiPo batteries. LiPo batteries are a fantastic powerful way to get energy into the models that we fly, drive, sail or whatever. You just need to treat them with a bit of respect and care and they will give you many years of happy service.
Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.